Within days of the Tibetan riots in March this year, the internet was flooded with pro-Chinese videos like these. But these homemade propaganda videos revealed only the tip of nationalist sentiments. A massive hidden army of young Chinese patriots is already waging a cyber war unbeknownst to the West. Patriotic computer hacking is on the rise. It is becoming the new weapon uh, of warfare. Low cost, high speed, and the scope of an attack is much greater uh, than a traditional military attack. Beijing is on the eve of Olympic glory. And tens of thousands of proud student volunteers are on the streets to help out visitors. This is a uh, wall of smiles, on which posted is the, the smiling pictures that we collected from, uh, from people who pass here, because we consider you know, smile is a kind of blessing to the Olympics. For the volunteers at this kiosk, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to serve the motherland at a major turning point for China, a nation with a proud history. China's overwhelming Olympic pride is most evident among the so-called Generation Y, the almost a quarter of a billion people born during the 1980s, like 21-year-old nationalist student Wang Tao. Wang To and his friends spend much of their free time playing patriotic video games, like this one called Kill the Little Japanese. This generation are angry about China's treatment by the West and attempts to interfere in issues like Tibet. The March riots in the Tibetan capital brought an unforgiving response from the government, with a death toll estimated at around a hundred. Barred from entering Tibet, Western media reported what it could from afar. But as Western condemnation flowed, the reaction from many Chinese was swift and quite extraordinary. Homemade videos and the power of the internet spread their rage at lightning speed throughout China and around the globe. While many citizens relish the opportunity to lash out at what they see as a Western culture of China bashing, others are taking on the moral defence of their motherland by targeting the Western media. Uh, just 24 years old, Rao Jin already runs his own media company and a popular Chinese website with a distinctly patriotic flavour. 
Its aim is to expose what he says is a culture of lies and bias in the Western media, including the constant criticism of China's human rights record. So, when the Western media or the Western media criticize the Olympics, and even in the training camp, they create many obstacles. This is inevitable. It creates a culture of Provocatively, the young entrepreneur has called his website anti-CNN, and according to Rao Jin, CNN itself is one of the worst offenders. He claims they were caught red-handed using doctored photographs during their coverage of the Tibetan riots. Uh, his this is the original photo. 然后这个是经过 CNN 裁剪以后的照片，它的标题和这个图片很容很容易让人误以为是军车在驱逐这个示威者，但事实上他把这一片给去掉了，就是有很多这个呃暴徒向军车扔石块的这个照片。And according to Rao Jin, the problem isn't confined to CNN. With China under a constant barrage of criticism from the Western media during the Olympic build-up, anti-CNN has been fighting back. 包括这个是还是 Fox News， 把这是印度的警察在抓捕示威者，但是他仍然在用的说明是中国军队，这是非常非常明显的。然后 BBC 把这个。呃，就是救护车说成是这个重兵压境。Right or wrong, Rao Jin's claims struck a chord in China, despite their own media's selective reporting and the government's mind-boggling steps to control the internet. Western experts have dubbed it the Great Firewall. But in China, it's known by its evocative official title, the Golden Shield Project. An estimated 30,000 people working to block websites deemed unfit for Chinese viewing. But that doesn't bother young students like Wang Tou. Some of us think that he was just getting into the internet. He was getting into the internet. He was getting into the internet. He was getting into the internet. 这些后果是其实很严重的，我觉得，所以很应该及时去，去封闭那些不良那种网站，应该应该去怎么。But China's firewall technology has an even more sinister edge. Using keyword recognition software, officials are constantly monitoring for internet usage deemed suspicious. It's a handy big brother tool to control dissidents and eager young nationalists alike. But the government was happy to give free rein to national rage, at least for a while. It was the Olympic torch relay's French leg with repeated attempts to douse the flame which triggered China's nationalist internet rage. Matters worsened when the French president hinted at boycotting the game's opening ceremony. For the Chinese, it was seen as a collective slap in the face. We express ourselves as our mother's being abused. We have to make a normal response. We are not called a national movement. We are very sensitive to our young people, and we have our own way of expressing ourselves. The actions of young Beijing biologist Sun Fa were typical of the sense of national outrage. Using internet blogs and chat rooms, he called for a China-wide boycott of the huge French retailer Carrefour. Overnight, he had a massive response. In the internet, there are about 
，因为你可以有好多群，有二十几个、二十五六个群，每个群有十个人，那每个人群至少有一百个人吧，这就两千人。But nationalism can often prove to be a double-edged sword, as the Chinese government is acutely aware. While it often fuels nationalist passions, its high-tech surveillance allows it to constantly monitor patriotic activists. There's nothing the government fears more than losing control of a situation. And with the Carrefour protest escalating, officials moved quickly to stop it. 至少我是被有些就有关部门来找去谈话，就是说，了解我们这个活动的一初衷、组织方式，然后呢，同时了解我们可能的参加的人数、一些具体情况吧。当时我跟他们达成共识，第一个要一定要提出申请这样活动，第二个就是说在这样的情况下，嗯，希望我们就是不要有这样的活动，因为毕竟是奥运会，而且有很多的。一些不明身份的人士会利用这样的群众性的活动来发起一些其他别有用心的一些运动，或者别有用心的一些活动。These homegrown protests are significant enough, but what's causing deep alarm for Western security experts are an estimated 300,000 Chinese hackers and computer warriors. Ready to wage a cyber war. 主要就是当时 C N， 还有说家乐福，这是一些都党独的事件，这是就是分分裂祖国，对吧？对祖国的统一造成一定的威胁。然后这样的话，就是广大的网民，包括中国人，基本上都愤怒了。就是说，作为一个黑客爱好者，作为一些计算机爱好者，然后当时就随着大家一起，大家一起通过网络，通过一定的手段，来揭揭露这个事实。还有一定的方法，就通过一定的技术，来就是给他造成一些压力。This 22-year-old computer whiz kid is one of China's prolific new breed of hackers. Known by his hacker pseudonym of Yan Zhao, he offered Dateline a revealing glimpse into the secret world of Chinese hackers. 然后，外部 share 就是跟这种差不多，这就是一个外部 share。Yan Zhao was just one of several hundred Chinese hackers who launched an assault on the websites of CNN and Carrefour using a relatively simple technique of gaining entry through the system's weakest point, known as the web shell. 在这服务器上，我们可以进行一些属性用户账号，要删除、添加、复制，进行一些常用的操作。拿拿下了 Web Shell 之后，如果想进一步的话，可以取得一些服务器权限，通过 Web Shell 提权啊，或者常常见的一些就是原来老一些漏洞啊 ，FTP 提权啊，或者说 PC Any Anywhere 一些就是远远程管理软件它存在一些漏洞，也提权。The result was CNN's online news replaced with web pages like this. Yan Zhao says hackers almost always work alone. But nearly all of them belong to one of the hundreds of different online hacker collectives in China. In contrast to the West's image of hackers as anti-government anarchists, Yan Zhao says the majority of China's hackers are staunch patriots, and their attacks on CNN and Carrefour demonstrate their willingness to defend and fight for China in a real cyber war. 当时有很多人嘛，很多人参与参与了这次的行动。有的人说他先先碰的是先检测的是家乐福，有的人现在检测 CNN。这如果说双方面的，就是说战争的话，网络战争，我感觉如果说国家需要的话，国家需要的就是说需要我们这就是这一些，就是说在民间的一些，就是说一些网民呢，或者说一个计算机爱好者需要我们的就是协助的话，有可能说大家一起努力，就说。
自保不成问题。As China's hackers become more sophisticated and brazen, Western security experts are growing fearful. If you go in through computer networks, uh, you could attack, for example, a power grid across an entire country. So uh, for a, 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 a tiny fraction of the cost and with much greater speed, uh, you can do crippling economic damage and military damage by doing a cyber attack. As one of America's top network security experts, Tim Bennett relies on intelligence services in the US and abroad, as well as his own forensic analysis, to track the audacious exploits of China's unofficial army of highly skilled hackers. Bennett believes China has a huge pool of government employees and freelance hackers at work, many driven by their devotion to the motherland. When spurred by nationalism, you go beyond just the financial motive and you get into that, that deep emotional motivation. And uh, that, that can uh, uh, lead to people to, to pursue this uh, around the clock for as long as necessary. Alarmed at the nightmare scenario it represents, the United States is funneling billions of dollars into a new cyber warfare command to protect against online attacks. And in Britain, Belgium and Germany, intelligence services have reported sophisticated Chinese attempts to hack government servers. China has been very active in using this tool, this conduit, uh, in order to gain economic advantage uh, surreptitiously through uh, industrial espionage, through hacking into government networks uh, to obtain information uh, as a defense tool. Bennett says they're also suspected of trying to access a European power grid last year, while in 2003, a massive power outage shut down the northeastern United States. The total cost of that uh, shutdown, I think, was estimated at uh, $6.3 billion for like this 12-hour power outage. What I've been told by intelligence sources is that um, it has been traced back to China. If it has that ability, then it might have the ability to go in and cripple financial networks, transportation networks, uh, nuclear plants, chemical plants, all of which would have devastating effect. With foreigners flooding into Beijing for the Olympics, some Western security experts are suggesting they leave their laptops at home. Last year, US officials were red-faced when they learned that their top commerce official was the victim of a hacking assault during a visit to Beijing. The laptop of the US Secretary of Commerce was hacked into uh, by the Chinese government in advance of the meetings so that the Chinese counterparts to the, uh, to the, the U.S. Secretary of Commerce actually had his talking points and his briefing papers in front of them uh, uh, while he was sitting at the table. When Dateline put Bennett's claims to the Chinese government, we received the following response, stating that computer sabotage was prohibited under Chinese law and that as a global issue, China was also the victim of hacking. Centuries ago, in Imperial China, a system existed which allowed ordinary subjects to petition the emperor or his officials with their grievances. That system still exists today and draws tens of thousands of people to Beijing to vent their anger. They're called petitioners. All right, so can you do some translation for me? Yeah. Just seconds after I arrive at this meeting point for petitioners, the crowd starts to gather. I am about to witness an extraordinary scene of public dissent in this one-party state. Each of these petitioners has a different story to tell, 
but all are seeking justice in a China beset with inequality and corruption. And we come to petition and they put us in jail. My translator, Wang Yong, has told them I'm a journalist. And for these forgotten people, I'm a fleeting conduit to the outside world. But in communist China, spontaneous gatherings of petitioners like this never last long. The petitioner's conduit was about to be cut off, and although technically under Beijing Special Olympic rules I was allowed to conduct interviews, the police were edgy and state security officials arrived to film us and take notes from the crowd. For most of these petitioners, the reality is that within days of arriving in the capital, they are rounded up by the authorities and sent back to where they came from. But for the rising class of young urban nationalists like Wang Chou, awestruck by China's economic miracle, human rights are a secondary concern. He's keenly aware that in 20 years, when China is predicted to surge ahead of the United States as the world's largest economy, he and the rest of China's young nationalist generation may well be in charge, a responsibility viewed in patriotic terms. Hua 